Hey there, welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, I left you with an assignment, and that was to implement a better graph data structure than we already had. Something that can support a graph like this, where the vertices can have other types of data, not just integers, but strings or other types. So how would you implement a better graph data structure that's capable of storing uh, you know, strings and other types of data? That was the assignment, and I'm going to go over the solution to that in this lesson. But before I show you the code, I want to go over a little bit of theory and how to, how to think about solving this problem. The basic data structure that's going to manage this list is going to be an array. So let me draw that out here real quick, and I'll demonstrate to you exactly how to solve this problem. Now, if we have five vertices, each one of these vertices is going to have a slot number, right? So in this array, there's going to be five slots, two, three, four, five. So that's zero, one, two, three, four, okay? All the length of the array minus one is going to be the index position of the last slot. So what is each one of these slots going to contain? Well, it's going to contain something called a vertex, okay? It's going to be a vertex. It's going to be a vertex object. So you might think, okay, we need a class here. We're going to need a vertex class. And you'd be right. We're going to need a vertex class. And each one of these vertex objects is going to have two attributes. The first attribute is going to be the name. All right, so Elm Street or William Street, that's going to go in the name field, and it's going to be of type string. The second uh, field is going to be the node, the list of nodes. This is the important part. So the second field is going to be the list of nodes. So let's draw that out here. So this is a node, and it's going to connect to another node, which is going to connect to another node. All right, this is the linked list structure that we've already seen several lessons ago. So if you need a refresher on that, I highly recommend you go back and watch those lessons on the linked list uh, data structure. So this is going to be a singly linked list, and each one of these nodes uh, has a class behind it. And this is that class. It has a data field, and this data could be anything. Uh, and it has a uh, next field. Uh, the next field is supposed to point to a, another instance of itself. Okay, so this is a recursive data structure, and it points to another instance of itself. Let me break this these nodes down into two parts. The first part is going to represent the, the first variable, and the second part is going to represent the second variable. So this is the next field, which points to the next node. All right, this is the next field that points to the next node. And the last node of this slot is you know, it's just going to be null. So the question is, what does this data field contain? I'm just going to put a make a red mark here. What does this field contain? That's the question. And that's basically the backbone behind this entire problem. This data field is actually going to contain the index position of the vertex of the vertex that's adjacent to this to this object. All right. So for example, if we have a vertex here, um, let me draw that out. Let's let's say for example, this is another vertex that's going to contain its own list of nodes, right? What is the index position of this vertex? Well, the index position of this vertex is 3. So if there was an adjacency between this vertex and this vertex, 3, then uh, this uh, data is going to actually contain the index position, 3. If we had another vertex down here uh, that was also adjacent to this vertex, then this would be 4, and so on. Okay, so that's the way I want you to think about this problem. And if this is a bit confusing, don't worry, we're going to go over this in, in great detail in the code. But basically, the, the structure is an array. Each one of these slots is going to be a vertex. So if we have five vertices, we're going to have five slots of the array. Each one is going to be a vertex containing uh, a linked list, right? List of nodes. And each one of these nodes is going to contain uh, a reference to the connection. Of, uh, of another vertex. But the way that connection is made is through these index positions, okay? So to point to, the, to, to, to form an adjacency between uh, the, in, the vertex that resides in this slot, uh, we need to refer to the neighboring vertex's 
uh, index position. All right, so here's the three uh, index position. That's the vertex that's linked with this one. And then here's four. This is another vertex that's also linked with this uh, vertex in the first slot. Okay, so we form the links uh, between these nodes and the data that's going to reside in each one of these nodes are going to be index positions of the neighboring vertices. All right, so let's finally take a look at the code. Now, just a quick note before I move on to the solution. I hope, I really hope, I have my fingers crossed, I hope that you took the time to work out this problem on your own, all right? Um, that's the only way this is going to work. You have to struggle with it. And if you had a hard time, that's awesome because that means you were you're, you're building those neural pathways in your brain, exercising those brain cells, and getting good at this, okay? That's the best way to master anything new is to struggle with it, and hopefully you did the due diligence and worked out this problem as far as you could. You don't have to get it correct, but you have to put in the time and effort. So I highly encourage you, please, 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 make sure to, to work on this as much as you can before moving on to my solution. So without further ado, I'm about to move on to the solution code. So here we are back in the main method of the app class in the ds.graph package. And this is the better graph uh, class that I've created. And we'll go over that in a second. But uh, just a reminder of how this is working, we're adding these vertices first, the five vertices, and then we are adding the relationships between them by this add edge method. Okay, and then we're printing the result. So when we run this, this is going to print that state is uh, has a an adjacency with Avenel and state has an adjacency with Elm. Here Avenel has an adjacency with Pocono, Elm has an adjacency with William, and Elm has an adjacency with Avenel. That's basically what this is showing. All right. So uh, let's start with this first method, add vertex. So if I hit control and click on this, it's going to take me to the method definition. So we'll start from here. This add vertex is a method in the better graph class. Okay, if you scroll all the way to the top, this is the, the better graph class, and it has some variables that we're defining up here. So let's go down to the add vertex method. The name for the vertex, whether it's William or Elm, whatever is passed in here, that's going to be used for the instantiation of a vertex object. That's what this line means. We're in, in, instantiating a new vertex object by passing in the name, and uh, then we're assigning that to the, uh, one of the slots of the array. This is the array that I showed you in the drawing. If there are five vertices, this array is going to have five slots. And we're going to assign each one of the vertices to each one of the slots. And then we increment this index counter. And this is just a variable that's been defined up here. It starts with zero. And every time we add a vertex, every time we add a vertex, this is incremented. So we move to the next slot. Now, this instantiation of vertex, let's take a look at this class definition. If you control click, you'll notice that I've defined this vertex class in the same class as better, better graph. Okay? So this is an inner class inside of the better graph class. You could have had this class outside as well. You could have you know, created a new file called vertex.java and just have this class defined there. But since this is just a little bit of code, I just decided to leave it in the same uh, better graph class. And this is as simple as just the name and then the list of nodes. That's what this add list, adjacent list variable is supposed to represent. It's going to be a list of nodes. And this is the linked list portion that uh, you should already be familiar with. We, we covered the linked list several lessons ago. But this is this, the, 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 the class node. It's a data type of node. And if you look for this class, that's right here. Okay. Now this node is going to have a uh, two two variables. One of them is the vertex in IDX vertex index. So this is supposed to uh, represent the adjacent vertexes slot position in the array. And this next is just going to point to the next instance of this node. All right, and that's how we're able to uh, connect the vertices with each other by utilizing this node recursive object. The next field of a particular node is going to point to another instance of node. So when we add this vertex here, when we call this add vertex method, we initialize the vertex without any any particular nodes. Okay, we just sort of give the name, and uh, that gets uh, constructed here. We don't give a node yet. 
All right. Once we're done adding all of the vertices, once we're done adding all of these vertices, then we're able to add the edges between the vertices to form the relationship. Now, just a quick note above here, uh, the first line I kind of skipped. This is the initialization of the better graph data structure. Okay. Uh, and it, it has two arguments. The first argument is the number of vertices that we have, which is going to be five in this case. And the second argument is that it's directed. Okay. Um, and this is just sort of a check that's, uh, if you look at the better graph definition, you'll be able to see that if it's undirected, there's a little bit of logic there. Now let's take a look at the add edge method. So I'm going to control click here. This is the add edge method. This takes an argument uh, of the source to the target vertex. Okay. So what happens here is there's this method called index for name. So what this method is going to do is going to look through the array in which all of the vertices exist. It's going to look through that array and find the index position for the given name, the source vertex as well as the destination vertex. And it's going to get the index number of where these vertex vertices are in the array. And then the source vertex, which has an uh, index of v1 idx, at that index position of the array, we are assigning to its list of nodes a new node. Okay, that's what this new node means. And that this is essentially just taking the index position for where the destination vertex is and assigning its next variable this. So the next variable uh, in the node class is being assigned the list of nodes of the source index. Now there's just a little bit of logic. If undirected, then we have to do it the other way around as well. But this, since this is a directed graph, it's never going to get to this, this point. And then finally down here in the print method, we are looping through the array of lists, right? Each one of those vertices, we're looping through them and we are getting its name. And then for the particular vertex, we are getting its list of nodes. And then we're looping through each one of those nodes and printing it out. And that's how we get this visual representation down here. Okay, so review this code, understand it, and hopefully you took the time to work out this on your own. But definitely study this. There's multiple ways you can solve the same problem. This is just one implementation. But uh, here it is. This is the solution. Take your time to really study it. Make sure you understand it thoroughly. If you need to watch the lesson over, go ahead and do that before moving on. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Until the next time, I'll see you soon.